Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of an interest rate swap and how it can be used by companies to transform an obligation from a fixed rate to a floating rate. To illustrate, consider here company A and before the swap perhaps they are paying a fixed rate obligation. Maybe they've issued a corporate bond that requires them to pay as interest 5% plus 20 basis points. So before the swap they are paying on a fixed rate obligation. Let's consider also company B that before the swap is paying on a floating rate obligation. So maybe they've borrowed money and to pay interest on that money they have to pay LIBOR plus 10 basis points. Before the swap they are paying floating. Let's assume the companies engage the help of a financial intermediary to create for them an interest rate swap, or in this case, what we'll call a plain vanilla interest rate swap, one of the most popular derivatives in existence. And the swap means that if we go back to company A, let's assume they are going to be what's called the floating rate payer in the swap. So company A is going to pay LIBOR in exchange for receiving a fixed rate of let's say 5% minus one and a half basis points. They are the floating rate payer because they are going to pay LIBOR and get back a fixed rate. If we go to company B in this swap they're going to be what's called the fixed rate payer because they are going to pay let's say 5% plus one and a half basis points. See how they're the fixed rate payer? Exchange for, in exchange for that, they're going to receive LIBOR a floating rate. So these companies, by way of the financial intermediary, have engaged in a plain vanilla interest rate swap. What's the difference? Well, if we go back to company A, before the swap they were paying fixed. Now you can see in the swap they are receiving the fixed rate, which almost entirely matches their obligation. The only difference is the 20 plus one and a half or 21 and a half basis points. So company A's net difference here now, since the fixed rate basically passes through, is they are going to be paying LIBOR plus 21 and a half basis points. But the key idea is they've converted their previous before swap position of paying a fixed rate into now they are paying a floating rate LIBOR plus 21 and a half basis points. Company B is just in the inverse situation. Before the swap they had this loan tied to LIBOR. After the swap notice the LIBOR that's received almost entirely matches the LIBOR loan just minus the 10 basis points. And so their net exposure, really, or obligation after the swap is now 5% plus 11.5 basis points. So they've converted a situation before the swap of paying a floating rate into a situation after the swap of their, of their obligation is now to pay a fixed rate, 5 five plus eleven and a half basis points. So both of the companies have transformed their interest rate ob obligation. I used one and a half basis points here just to shave off a little bit just to illustrate the idea that the financial intermediary here notice the LIBOR can be matched perfectly and passes right through effectively the 5% here that is received plus one and a half basis points almost gets passed through except the minus, base, minus one and a half basis points. So in this case, the financial intermediary is getting paid this way by with this spread. In this case, one and a half plus one and a half here. Under this assumption, the financial intermediary is getting paid three basis points on the notional. They're collecting this spread here, which is not much in percentage terms, but on a large notional can be quite a nice paycheck. Briefly, I wanted to make two other points about the plain vanilla interest rate swap. Here, by using an example of, let's assume the notional is 100 million, and that the fixed rate payer 
is paying 5% and receiving LIBOR as the floating rate. Further, the term or tenor of the swap may be three years with swap payments exchanged every six months or semi-annually. So the first point is that in the case of this plain vanilla interest rate swap, unlike say a currency swap, there's no need for the counterparties to exchange the notional principal because they're both denominated in dollars they would just be giving each other a hundred dollars at the begin hundred million dollars at the beginning and at the end that notional nets itself out we need a notional in order to compute the interest rate payments but there is no exchange of the notional at least for this plain vanilla interest rate swap and the second point is that if we think about the inception of the swap the floating rate payment that's going to apply in this case is a six month LIBOR. The swap's going to settle every six months. At the onset, at inception of the swap, the six month LIBOR at that time will be known. Let's just say it's also 5%. If we go forward six months to the first settlement, the floating rate is going to be that 5%, that six month LIBOR that was known when we created the swap. So the first floating rate payment is known at swap inception. Then as we go forward another year, this time to the second period or second swap of cash flows, that, that won't be known at inception, but that again will look back to the six month LIBOR that applied at the beginning of that six month period. So those are the two points I wanted to make about the plain vanilla interest rate swap. This is David Harper of the Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time.